Well, hello everybody, I'm Miss Aline, and thank you for joining us today for Kids Corner on Armstrong Cable Channels 20 and 100. Today we are at South Range Elementary School with the first grade class, and we're gonna have fun with turtle time. We're gonna read two stories, and then we're gonna do a really cool turtle art project. So stay tuned, and let's have some turtle time fun. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How's everybody feeling today? Good. Good. You guys look like you're feeling pretty good out there. Everybody's got their shiny, smiling faces on and their bright eyes, all that good stuff. <coughs> so, I'm Miss Aline, and today we're going to have some fun because it is turtle time. Can everybody say that for me? <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to learn a little bit about turtles. We're going to read two stories and then we're going to do a very fun turtle art project. Does that sound good? Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Does anybody here know anything about turtles? Two. Were we born out of eggs? No. And our moms and dads take care of us. Somebody takes care of us until we get bigger and we're able to go out on our own. But for sea turtles, they're a little bit different. Like she said, after the mommy lays the eggs, they get taken care of by the sun. They get warmed up so they don't have to get sat on like a chicken does or something like that. And then once they hatch, they go out on their own and they learn to live. So that's pretty cool, huh? Why would they hide in their shells? How about you right here? Because they don't want to get like attacked. They hide in their shells to protect them. So when they get scared or when there's danger near, they go into their shells. Do you guys have shells to go into when you get No, we're a little bit different from turtles like that too, huh? How about you right here? What do you know about turtles? The reptiles. That's an interesting bit of information. Hmm. How about in the back over there? Um, there's different kinds of turtles. There are different kinds of turtles. Does anybody know a kind of turtle? How about you over here in the pink shirt? A snapping turtle. A snapping turtle. We talked about those. How about somebody I haven't heard from yet? How about you right here in the yellow? Um, there are um, sea turtles and they and um, baby sea turtles. Just, just some, some try to get into the water, but they but they get taken by sea. Oh yeah, sometimes the danger. Um, comes a little bit faster than they can learn to get into their shells or get into the water to protect themselves. So sometimes, some of them don't quite make it to get to where they're trying to go. And two more. You with the cheetah pattern. Um, tortoises. Tortoises, that's a good one. Is that leopard or cheetah? I'm not sure, it would be leopard. Okay. Um, how about you right here with the plaid shirt? Uh, they live in their shells. They do live in a shell. And one more kind of turtle that we haven't talked about yet, and then we'll hold our questions and we're gonna get started with our story. Um, you right here with the blue shirt. Uh, there's like, um, those turtles that don't go in the water, the ones that have feet. There are some kind of, there are different kinds of turtles. There's some turtles that live in the water pretty much. There's some turtles that pretty much live on land and then there's some turtles that do both. Does everybody know that? Yeah. Cool. All right, so we're gonna hold the rest of our questions for now and our comments and our helping out of information and we're gonna go ahead and get started with our story for today. Well, one of our stories and then we'll get to the other one. Our very first one 
teaches us a little bit about turtles. And this is called Turtle Crossing. When the first spring rain trickles through the soil, a baby painted turtle comes to life in an underground nest. She claws her way up through mud and tangled roots, out of the darkness into dazzling lights. Soon, her brothers and sisters scramble out of the nest and begin to march to find water. The little female leads them through the field and stops in the tall grass at the edge of the road. She stretches her neck and sniffs the air. The scent of water is strong. In a burst of energy, she skitters across the pavement, slides down a sandy bank, and plops into the cool green water of a pond safe. The turtle is the size of a quarter, so it's about that big. That's pretty small, huh? Her shell is soft and doesn't protect her yet. She spends the summer alone, hiding in the shadows near the water's edge. Chomp, chomp. Her jaws clamp shut on a wiggling beetle. Actually, it's the beetle's larva. Underwater, the turtle is quick and graceful. She is a deadly predator to the minnows, tadpoles, and water bugs she chases down. So even though she's tiny, for other little animals, she's pretty uh, nifty as a hunter, huh? The pond is also home to other predators. An ancient snapping turtle prowls the murky water. His shell is bigger than a bicycle helmet. His crushing jaws gobble any animal that crosses his path. Luckily, he never notices the little, the little snapping turtle, I'm sorry, the little painted turtle, as she darts under the leaves. The snapper is hunting larger prey. The painted turtle peeks out of her shell just in time to see the monstrous reptile block out the sun before he disappears into the deep. Is he the size a quarter? What did they say he was the size of? How about you in the cheerleading uniform? That's right. They said that he was the size of a bicycle helmet. That's pretty big to the little painted turtle, isn't it? Yep, pretty big. Summer turns to fall. The sunlight is not as warm and the days are shorter. One morning, a thin layer of ice covers the pond. At the end of October, the turtle takes a last breath of air, then paddles to the bottom and burrows into soft mud. The numbing cold slows her body functions. She doesn't eat or breathe. Her heart beats once every 10 minutes. Just enough oxygen from the water seeps through her skin to keep her alive through the long winter months. Finally in March, sunlight filters through the ice and dances across the bottom of the pond. The turtle stretches one foot out of the mud, then pulls her body free. Now she floats at the surface, gulping fresh air into her lungs for the first time in almost six months. Before she can eat, the turtle needs to warm up. I would need to warm up too if I had been down in that cold for that long. How about you guys? Yeah. She finds the perfect spot to perch and soak up some rays. On top of the shell, one of her, I'm sorry, on top of the shell of one of her neighbors. 
So see, she climbs up onto another turtle's shell and hangs out there to soak up the sun. Kind of funny, huh? The turtle spends summer days basking in the sun. In fall, she gets ready for winter, and in spring, it is time to grow strong again. Each year, a new ridge forms around her shell. See these ridges around the shell? When she is five years old, her shell is so tough that two predators can harm her. This stage in her life, the turtle feels an urge even stronger than survival. A male turtle feels it too, and he swims close enough to touch her, and at last, she notices him, so they're turtle dating. The turtle chases through the winding stems of water lilies, and the male glides ahead, then spins around to face the female. They touch noses, and they flutter, and his curved claws go across her cheeks and then they sink to the bottom. A month later, in June, the female turtle hauls her heavy body out of the water to look for a place to dig a nest. The perfect spot lies on the other side of the road. It's the same field where she was born. Her belly scrapes against the pavement as she makes her way across. Cars often zip back and forth. She reaches the other side safely. At the top of the small hill, the turtle scoops dirt away with her hind feet. Then she puts back the end of her shell into the hole and lays five leathery eggs. After the last one drops in, she buries the nest and tamps it down with her belly to hide, the hungry, to hide it from the hungry skunks and raccoon. Because I think they like turtle eggs. After a rest, the turtle heads home at dawn. The tall grass at the edge of the road is a safe place to scan for dangers. She stretches her neck, sniffs the air, and begins to cross the pavement. Two lights pierce in the horizon like a pair of predator's eyes. The turtle is slow on land, and she's no match for the fast-moving car. There is only one defense. She stops in her tracks, pulls her head, tail, and legs deep inside her shell. The lights grow brighter as the car speeds closer, and just as the shadow reaches the turtle, the car stops. The doors open and two people step out. While his mother watches for traffic, a boy picks up the turtle. He carries it across the road and sets her down on the side where she was heading towards. The turtle stays inside her shell, but when she sees the water, she pops her head and legs out and rushes into the pond. When the turtle comes to the surface again, the car is gone. As quickly as they entered her life, the people disappeared. Her eggs are safely hidden in the field across the road, and now she is safe too, at home in the pond. The turtle climbs onto a log and stretches her neck and legs. Sunlight seeps into her shell and warms her striped skin from the tip of her nose to the toes on her webbed feet. In spring, her babies will claw their way out of the earth. She might never see them, but some of them will make it across the road to hide in the cattails until they are large enough to leave the pond and lay eggs of their own. See these plants? Those are called cattails. And that is the end of our story. And if you guys ever get a chance to check this out, Turtle Crossing, on the back, it talks a little bit more about turtles. So when you have time, if you want to go to the library and check Turtle Crossing out, you can read the back with your mom or dad, okay? Mm -hmm. Do you guys like the story? Yeah. yeah. Gave us a lot of information, didn't it?
And it was pretty cool when the little boy helped the turtle get back to safety, wasn't it? Yes. All right. Our next story is really fun. It's called Turtles Race with Beaver. Yes. And it is by Joseph Brukak and James Brukak. Long ago, Turtle lived in a beautiful little pond. And did you notice something about this turtle? Doesn't it kind of look like the painted turtle from our other story? Yeah. That's pretty cool, huh? She was very happy because this pond had everything a turtle needed. The water was just deep enough and there was plenty of food to eat. And there were lots of nice rocks just above the water for Turtle to sun herself on. One day, as happens every year in the north, winter began to come to land. As she had done year after year, Turtle swam to the bottom of the pond and buried herself in the thick mud. While Turtle slept for the winter, another animal came walking along. It was Beaver, who had been looking for a new home. This will be a perfect spot, said Beaver, once I make some changes. Soon he began doing one of the things that beavers do so well. Chomp, chomp. When as he took down one tree after another to, big, to build a big dam. And a dam is something that stops water, and it's where beavers live. He worked hard for many days, and as he did, the water got deeper and deeper. After finishing his dam, Beaver made himself a fine lodge of mud and sticks, then settled for the rest of the winter. He was very happy. The moons came and went, and spring returned once more to the land. The birds sang, and the ice melted away. Then Turtle woke up. Crawling out from under the mud, she began to swim towards the surface of the water. <coughs> but she had to swim higher and higher and higher and higher. By the time Turtle made it to the surface, she realized that the water was four times as deep as before. Her pond didn't look much the same at all. All the rocks she loved to sun herself on, underwater. On one side of the pond, stretched as far as her eyes could see. On the other stood a huge dam. Not too far, that was a big round lodge. And Turtle heard a loud whack. She turned to see where the sound had come from. A strange animal was swimming towards her. It was Beaver. Who are you? asked Beaver. And what are you doing here? I am Turtle, Turtle said. This is my pond. I have lived here my whole life. Your pond, said Beaver. This is my pond. Do we see a problem starting here? I do too. <laughs> Look at my wonderful dam and my splendid lodge. This is a beaver's pond. Yes, Turtle said. I can see that you've done lots of work. Couldn't we just share the pond? There's plenty of room. Turtle doing the right thing? Yes. That's right. Do you think beaver's gonna agree? I don't think he is either. Ha! Beaver laughed. I will not share my pond with any little turtle. But I will challenge you to a race. Whoever wins can stay. Whoever loses must go find a new home. I think Beaver is pretty confident that he's going to beat this slow little turtle. I think he thinks he is. Let's see what happens. Turtle didn't really want to race. She could see that Beaver, with his big flat tail, was probably much, much more of a fast swimmer. But this pond was the only home she knew. I agree, 
Turtle said, we will race. It was decided that the race would take place the next morning at first light. The two would meet on the side of the pond and race to the other. That night, Beaver told the other animals about the race. Word began to spread throughout the forest. Squirrel told Rabbit, and Rabbit told Fox, and Fox told Wolf, and Wolf told Deer, and Deer told Moose, and Moose told Bear. And soon every animal in the forest knew. Before first light came to the land, all of the animals of the forest gathered around the pond. As they waited for Turtle and Beaver to arrive, many chose sides. Most of the smaller animals, such as Mouse, Chipmunk, and Rabbit, sided with Turtle. Most of the bigger animals, such as Wolf, Moose, and Bear, sided with Beaver. As they waited, they began to sing, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver. They sang even louder when Beaver came swimming over from his lodge and Turtle popped up from underwater. Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver. Little Beaver. Turtle and Beaver took their positions on the shore. Bear lifted his big paw in the air. On your mark, get set, go. Splash went Beaver, leaping off from the shore. He was certain he would leave Turtle far behind, but Turtle had gotten an idea. Before Beaver hit the water, Turtle stretched out her long neck, opened her mouth, and bit into the end of Beaver's tail. Flap, 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 went Beaver, swimming as fast as he could, but as fast as he went, Turtle was right behind, holding on as hard as she could. The other animals kept cheering, but now some of the big, bigger animals were cheering for Turtle instead of Beaver. Turtle! Beaver! Turtle! Beaver! Turtle! Turtle! Soon Beaver was halfway across the pond. Even though Turtle was still holding on, it looked as if Beaver would win for sure. Then Turtle bit a little harder into Beaver's tail. Flap, 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 Beaver swam then faster. Turtle still gone. Now more of the animals were cheering for Turtle. Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Beaver, Turtle, Turtle, Turtle. Now they were almost to the other side and Beaver seemed sure to win, but Turtle bit as hard as she could into Beaver's tail. Crunch. Yow! yelled Beaver. He flipped his big tail up and out of the water. When his tail reached its highest point, Turtle let go. Whee! sang Turtle as she flew through the air right over Beaver's head. <laughs> Thunk! Turtle landed on the far shore and crawled across the finish line. Turtle had won the race. All the animals cheered. Turtle! 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 Everybody cheer. Turtle! 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 And Turtle was very pleased. But she could see how sad Beaver was. I would still be happy to share my pond, she said. But Beaver was so embarrassed that he left without another word. Over time, Beaver's dam fell apart and the water got shallower and shallower. Turtle had back all her wonderful rocks to sun herself on. As for Beaver, he did find a new home in a pond not too far away. In that pond though, there also lived 
another turtle. <laughs> Can I share your pond with you? Beaver asked. Of course, said the other turtle. And so the two of them lived there happily through all the seasons to come. Did you guys like that story? Yes. <laughs> Me too. Did Beaver learn to share? Yes. Yes. I think that'll be good for Beaver for all of the rest of his life. <laughs> So today, we are going to make our very own turtles. And so what I'm gonna have all of you do is table by table, you're gonna line up and I'm gonna give you your turtle parts. And we are gonna take one of our turtle legs, put some glue from your glue stick on the flat side of your turtle leg, on the edge on one side, not on both sides, just on one side. And so you will smear some at the top of the flat end of your turtle leg like that, and you will stick it to one part of your turtle's body at the edge. Stick your first two pieces onto your turtle body. You're gonna now take your turtle arms and begin to do the same exact thing on the flat edge of your turtle arm. And you're gonna stick it on the opposite side up here. So you should have two on bottom, two on top. But make sure that you leave room in the middle of your turtle arms for your turtle head to go. So you should have one on one side and one on the other coming up, okay? Hey everybody, I'm Miss Aline and I want to thank you guys for joining us today at South Range Elementary with the first grade class. It was turtle time today and we had two really fun stories and a very cool turtle art project. So I hope you guys had fun. I hope you get a chance to make your very own turtle and make sure that you stay tuned to Armstrong Cable channels 20 and 100. And until next time, it is Kids Corner saying bye-bye.